On today's show, Toyota expects the RAV4 to become its top-selling vehicle in the U.S. Renault is returning to Formula One, and FCA travels a long time ago to a galaxy far, far away. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for December 4th of 2015. In an effort to improve safety, we've wondered if racing series like IndyCar and Formula One should switch from open to closed cockpits, or at least some kind of windshield. And based on a new concept from McLaren, it's thinking the same way too. Meet the MP4X, a look at the future of Formula One. But don't think the closed cockpit is the only thing that sets this car apart from what's currently racing around tracks. While some kind of hybrid powertrain will likely still be used, we could also see solar panels to control onboard functions or be used for a short boost of power. And the tracks themselves could even have inductive couplings built right into them to help recharge the batteries, which are integrated into the crash structure on this concept. McLaren also sees a future where vehicle systems are controlled with hand gestures as the instrument panel could be just a holograph or even the possibility of using brain patterns to control systems. Any way you look at it, this is certainly a futuristic concept indeed. Speaking of Formula One, Renault just announced it will be making its comeback to the sport in 2016. The automaker signed a contract to take over the Lotus team. There will be some growing pains though. Renault has not competed as a constructor since 2009, and as CEO Carlos Goen puts it, our ambition is to win even if it will take some time. But it sure is good to see a company that has such a legacy in the sport make a return. Uber is growing like crazy, providing over 1 million rides a day and signing up more than 50,000 new drivers a month. Now the company is looking to raise another $2 billion from investors, which Bloomberg reports would give the company a market valuation of more than $63 billion. As a point of comparison, GM's and Ford's market cap is $55 billion. But now, four of Uber's key competitors are ganging up to take it on. Lyft from the United States, Didi Kuwaiti from China, Ola from India, and Grab Taxi from Southeast Asia are teaming up to offer rides to international travelers who can use the same app that they use at home to use any of those services. This emerging sector is called Mobility Services and it promises to disrupt the automotive industry as we know it. Still to come, Ford comes out with its own line of trailers, haulers, and campers. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles. And by Pure Michigan, leading the automotive world in intelligent connected vehicles. We run on brain power. A few weeks back, we told you about how several RV companies are converting Ford's transit van into motorhomes. And now the company is coming out with its own line of licensed trailers, toy haulers, and campers. RV company Live in Light, which is based in Indiana, helped design the campers and trailers and will also build them. The RVs come with some Ford styling cues, including a front window and wheels inspired by the F-Series plus a large blue oval logo on the sides. The campers go on sale early next year, while the trailer and toy haulers will be available later in 2016. You can't watch television these days without seeing a commercial with some sort of promotional tie-in with the upcoming Star Wars movie. And now FCA is joining in on the fun. It just released a series of ads to promote its cars alongside the new film. The spots will be used globally, not just in the U.S. Last month at the LA Auto Show, the company also displayed a Fiat 500e with a custom paint job inspired by the Stormtroopers. FCA just started airing the commercials, you can check them out on YouTube if you want, and the new movie hits theaters on the 18th. Coming up next, a look at Nissan's strategy to boost its pickup sales. find you in the end. Hi, Dad. When you're committed to the job, 
Your tires can't be weak in the knees. Let them go. Durable, dependable Firestone tires. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. A decade ago, sales of the Nissan Titan hit a peak of 91,000 pickups in the American market. This year, Nissan will be lucky to sell 12,000 of them. As the company tries to claw its way back into the segment, it's redesigning the Titan and expanding the model line, including a model called the Titan XD. It's not a half ton, and it's not a three quarter ton truck, but fits right in between. Nissan says many truck buyers find that a half ton truck can't tow a big enough load, but that a three quarter ton truck is more truck than they need and don't wanna pay for that extra capacity. So the XD model is aimed right at them. Nissan says there are 150,000 buyers a year who want a truck that fits this description. And if it's right, and if it can convince them that the XD is right for them, then Nissan could see a significant increase in pickup sales. If you want to learn more about the new Titan, make sure you check out our most recent Autoline After Hours, where John and Gary interview the team who helped create the new truck. You can find that on our website, autoline.tv, or on our YouTube channel. And speaking of sales, the Toyota Camry is not only the best-selling vehicle in the company's lineup, it's been the number one car in the U.S. for the past 13 years. But with the growing popularity of small crossovers, the Camry's reign as Toyota's top-selling vehicle could come to an end. The head of the company's U.S. sales division, Bob Carter, believes that within the next five years, the RAV4 will become its best-selling vehicle in the U.S. The company expects to sell 425,000 Camrys this year, compared to around 300,000 RAV4s. But Carter expects the RAV4 to close the gap because millennials are choosing CUVs as the new family vehicle. To keep up with demand, Toyota is importing RAV4s from Japan and is also adding a second plant in Canada to build the RAV4, which will give the company the ability to produce 400,000 a year. That wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend.